वेलकम फ्रेंड्स आई एम प्रिपेरिंग अ वीडियो ऑन यूज ऑफ वेब पैक विद द माइक्रो फ्रंट एंड आर्किटेक्चर विच इज वेरी पॉपुलर नाउ वर्ड इज एंड आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू हाउ वेब पैक इज यूज अलॉन्ग विद द माइक्रो फ्रंट एंड मिनिफिकेशन पार्थिंग रिएक्ट कोड पार्थिंग व्यू कोड कॉम्प्रेसिंग एच टी एम एल कॉम्प्रेसिंग इमेजेस and this trend this is very trendy topic actually web pack is nowadays used very heavily with the front ends so that uh, we can leverage the uh, important uh, considerations provided by the web pack in fact web pack is the all rounder stuff actually you can see you can you might be knowing about that but today i will walk you through the deep dive of this particular topic i will show you the code i will show the how micro front ends work two different micro front ends uh, work how they interact with each other and uh, what kind of configuration available with the web pack so let's deep dive let's understand and so that uh, you guys can also work on and create any new micro front end or even you do not work on micro front end a web pack is having so many use cases which which are performance oriented like linting also you can configure so many things you can do i will explain everything mostly so that you can understand what role web pack plays in developers life be you front end or be you node js back end or whatever okay so let's start i would request you to watch this video completely so that you understand the all the topics i have done so much of hard work to find out the topics work on it create the ppt prepare the video and showcase it in front of all of you thank you very much let's move ahead so so now let's understand what is the problem statement let's not talk about webpack first of all let's see what is the problem statement so you might be knowing about the typescript and you also might be knowing that pure typescript code is not understood by the browser so you want to write the typescript but you know that typescript code is not understood by browser so what that's, that is one use case that is one biggest problem browser only understand plain vanilla javascript and this is going to be forever right because browser are trained to understand plain vanilla javascript which we write generally which we used to write earlier but nowadays typescript and uh, react js vue js these all other things are popular scss sas less text stack style sheets written code is also not understood by the, by the browser what browser understand is css cascading style sheets but they are not intuitive these new technologies scss sas less these have so many new features which you want to use then how will you use actually because even though you write it and open that file in browser it will not understand you need to transpile it you need to parse it so this is the problem okay i am telling about the problem only now images are not compressed by default so if let's say there is a image of 500 kb it will not be compressed it will be served as it is so bandwidth considerations you can understand uh, it will be not performant right because image is bigger and what if that same image same display is converted into wp format uh, the different format i mean okay so uh, and compressed format so it will be better performance wise storage wise everything now react js code is also not understood by browser whatever react code we write we need babel for that to transpile so react developers sometimes don't know don't understand but this is the truth actually whatever react code you write you we need to transpile that code and we have a babel that's why we can do it and that's the reason it is uh, properly working on the browser so after executing build command or start command it converts that react js code to the plain javascript code and html code this is the background process that's why it takes little bit of time 
but most of the developers don't know about that but this is the problem statement <clears throat> now developers like to use the TypeScript, React JS, SCSS code because of advanced features. There are so many advanced features, single page application things and uh, image compressions and uh, let's say linting. Uh, let's say for example, I want my developers to not uh, put in the buggy code in the kit. This is the very common use case. How will you do that? There are certain things you will need to manually execute the ESLint command or TSLint command, TypeScript command. So, uh, but using the webpack, you can achieve that very easily. There are some settings, you just need to load the plugins, you just need to load the loaders, execute them, test them and it will create the bundler for you. So this is the problem statement. Now let's dive into what is the definition of webpack. What is webpack in fact? Webpack is a popular open source module bundler for JavaScript applications. So I don't agree with completely it says for JavaScript but uh, it also works with React, sorry no, no, images, CSS also, uh, ESLint also it works with. So images are not part of JavaScript, they are independent like you can use images in Java, ASP.NET also okay. But still Webpack is a popular open source module bundler. Now module bundler means what? Module bundler means there are 10 files. Okay, let's say there are 10 JavaScript files, 1.js, 2.js, 3.js and earlier what we used to do is load all the 10.js files if we need functionality from all of the JavaScript files. But nowadays it is not the case. What happens nowadays is we have one uh, setting of webpack, it creates only one file. One JavaScript file it will give bundle.js or something whatever name you want to give and it will bundle that file that is also minified in the minified format very compressive very small and you just load it and you don't need to load it that is what webpack is going to take care of okay so this is the beauty everything you will learn in this video so it is uh, webpack is primarily used for bundling and packaging front end javascript modules and it can also bundle or handle other assets such as css images and fonts except javascript and typescript so css images and fonts also it takes care of i also already told you webpack is one of the key stakeholder while developing micro front end app so webpack is very very important there are so many other uh, uh, few other uh, you know bundlers also module uh, bundlers also which you can use like uh, you can use grunt you can use gulp they are task runners actually not bundlers and um, you can use white, you can use some other things also which uh, which are uh, you know somewhat more or less related to the webpack, works like webpack. But this is one of the best techniques I have seen. Um, so before webpack why, what we used to do is, we used to write the manual script tags like you remember less than script index.js and then something like that. And then uh, we let's say we have 10 webpack files we used to concatenate or we used to use the grunt or gulp so that the task runner should do something we need to write the kind of script to, uh, to perform whatever we wanted okay and uh, we also need to handle the depend dependency management uh, what files we need what library we need uh, dynamically runtime whatever okay and we also used to do the server side rendering uh, you all know what is server side rendering right the files are uh, rendered and keep on the server side so that SEO front or other places we can make use of. Now this is the traditional web app representation wherein there is a browser and let's consider there are four files a.js, b.js, c.js and d.js. So it's a bundle list okay this is not related to webpack not grunt not gulp I am just talking about the plain representation of the traditional web app before all these new bundlers and task runners so what uh, was supposed to be done is loads one by one file separately so all the files uh, had a http request right you understand all the four files will have one um, one each http request and uh, what will happen after webpack usage what webpack will do is all the four files it will do the packaging it will create the bundle.js file and 
it will serve for the browser it will create the bundle and it will serve in the browser so that it will be it will be very very super fast and uh, compressed minified so that performance wise or http request wise it is supported right you understand all this what i am saying so i will give you example also so only one file is prepared using webpack okay and then uh, the the file which is created <coughs> is minified this is very beautiful uh, thing i am telling you let's say the file is of 500 kb so after minification it can come up to 100 kb also because all the all the comments and few things are removed from the application from the, the files so this is how things work after webpack so all the js files png files or jpg files images sas files css files whatever all converted into the four type of assets in this image at least i am showing you four different type of assets js css jpg and png so these are the static assets which uh, generally webpack runs and created for you and keep it inside one of the static folder for you to do whatever you wanted to do because this is not that it will uh, we, we need to do some things after bundle creation i will explain you everything don't worry uh, because we may need to take care of the uh, ci cd pipelines also which we already take care right we we have ci cd pipelines nowadays and we put the files at some place so that it will be served <clears throat> so guys let's talk about webpack possibilities and key features webpack is very popular because of so many reasons and once you start using it you will be falling in love with it i guarantee so there is a little bit learning curve i know and i agree also there is a steep curve because we don't uh, adopt what webpack uh, does in the initial uh, you know period but as soon as you start getting the benefits out of it you will start loving it I, so let's walk through what are the possibilities and key features so webpack does the model bundling as i told you it can combine multiple javascript modules into single file or set of files it can create set of files also uh, i have created video uh, i mean so given the example also and uh, then automatically it uh, does that uh, conversion uh, means uh, connection that is with the index.html file it can do the code splitting also uh, like you can utilize webpack to your code uh, split your code so that it can create multiple chunks and load them on demand so on demand means if it is not needed it will not load it's kind of lazy uh, kind of uh, you know uh, this thing loading code so that is the benefit of code splitting you can divide and have a small number of files small size files i mean okay there are so many loaders if you go through list of loaders which webpack supports there are so many so many loaders which you uh, may need for your application uh, so that you know you can do whatever you wanted to do and uh, like for example as i told you uh, css is css for react passing babel loader also there image compression layer minify minification eslint related loaders uh, which can uh, check the authenticity of your code if there are some code smells bugs or whatever and also very good thing is it can also fix your code if possible there are some uh, possibilities of fixing your code means not i mean logical errors not talking about i am talking about the uh, code smells which generally sonar queue gives so it integrates with the sonar queue also uh, there are so many plugins also to convert to the HTML and uh, it has the module federation plugin to create the uh, these micro front ends uh, okay and then it has development server it has also feature of hot module replacement for example you make changes and right away the code will change over so you saw this you might have encountered this kind of functionality in react js applications which is inbuilt uh, you modify something and it will reload and you know show the updated text right so you can implement that using webpack also for your plain javascript i mean plain javascript code also like a.js okay so this is the beauty asset management webpack can uh, handle various types of assets like images fonts and other static files it can optimize and bundle these assets and automatically reference into your code so don't need to you know you don't need to even what happens you know you will be surprisingly see 
new files with new names are stored and they, those are kind of encrypted file names. So you will be surprised what is going on. But don't worry, your webpack will automatically handle that internally. So it will, even though it is created inside the DIST folder, distribution folder, it will internally attach it automatically in the index dot file or uh, index.html or main.js or remote entry whatever don't worry at all it does the optimization by reducing the bundle size and image size also it can compress i told you very important thing very important thing you might have heard about the concept of tree shaking tree shaking is a kind of very uh, important aspect uh, in terms of handling the unused code if there is an unused code in your whole bundle okay application it will remove that code because it has feature it has powers to check if that code is used or not so while bundling it will remove that let's say there are there is a there are 500 files i'm just giving a example if there are 500 files and out of which 10 files are not being used at all they are not included they are not using anything doing anything so by using this tree shaking system it will remove that code and create the bundle accordingly. So, you know, this is kind of miracle, okay? And uh, Webpack, uh, you can do uh, so many uh, configurations also. For example, you can specify the entry point from where uh, you want uh, Webpack to consider the uh, starting point of your application, output paths, where you want to save the file, what should be the name of the files. Uh, you can specify the rules and other settings also. So, that means Webpack is your slave you tell them you tell him whatever you want don't worry you are telling him there are some default settings also which you will understand but majorly everything is related to you know uh, revolving around the configuration only so you have to do that configuration if you want to make some changes it can do the asset optimization also like compressing code optimizing images i'm i keep telling these things <coughs> so that you understand and you realize the value of this uh, web pack so hot model replacement i already told you whatever you are changing right away you want the page to refresh like react js view js angular js it has this feature for any type of file like javascript or okay plain javascript i mean okay and a dot js multiple environments webpack the, the beauty of webpack is it can have development test production environment and you can configure that using the environment variable it is the inbuilt, inbuilt stuff which uh, Webpack provides. You just need to use that. No need to. You can also do it manually. Like you can create some environment files. Dot env. Dot env. Dot prod. Whatever you want. But the, there is a there is a feature provided by Webpack also, so that you can handle that internally using the Webpack only. Uh, integrating with CSS preprocessors. This is very interesting. You want to work with HCSS. LESS, okay, you don't, because in the CSS, there are no nested rules, no variables, no mixins. You have to write everything from the scratch. What, what happens, let's say there is a CSS and you want to follow one color for one particular day. Let's say there are seven days, right, in a week and every day you want to have separate color. How will you maintain in the CSS, plain CSS? You will create seven CSS files, okay, because there is no variable system in the CSS, right? So, uh, in the SSS uh, SAS or less, there is a feature wherein you can mention the variable and uh, use that variable, whatever you want, uh, wherever you want. So, this is a reusable type of thing, configurable type of thing. Uh, I am not talking about Webpack right now. I am talking about the CSS preprocessor, the facility which we want to use, but our browser do not understand. If you write less code or SSS code, SCSS code, and want to execute on the browser, it will not understand. But it will, it will understand plain CSS code, right? So what Webpack does is, it has some preprocessors, loaders, which converts your less SAS uh, code into plain CSS, workable CSS, and that to very optimized way. This is what I wanted to say. I hope you guys understand what I mean here. So they are uh, able to, Webpack is able to integrate with different frameworks also. For example, Webpack, uh, you can create the micro front end using react js angular js Vue js and many more technologies whatever you know like next js and all so that is the beauty also so webpack uh, you can configure and make sure it works using the model federation plugin and webpack works with individually also webpack works with different javascript frameworks also like react angular Vue, and whatever the dependencies are there okay it 
it is a very good build process and everything yeah so code linting and formatting this is very beautiful webpack can be configured with the TSLint or ESLint like ESLint uh, and TS, TSLint is for type scripting right uh, you can follow the uh, you know make sure to enforce the coding standards whatever you want uh, and uh, you can uh, catch the potential er errors and it uh, helps to maintain the code quality and also mo uh, mostly it will fix the code for you also but you need to pro provide that uh, you know option dash dash fix so that means you are giving power to webpack to fix the issues and accordingly webpack will fix the issue also this is the miracle actually okay but i am saying it will fix some kind of issues it will not be able to fix all issues all the code and it will not fix your logical issues please uh, understand what i am saying it will fix code smells bugs or whatever small issues uh, like variable naming or uh, like it can try to fix all, all that issues so I have tried that that's why I am saying it works actually okay so you all know what is code linting generally code linting happens on the uh, you know sonar cube and all but this is the very beautiful thing which you can configure using the webpack also and uh, if there is any code smell or uh, any problem in the code bug in the code or whatever not logical I am saying whenever I am saying uh, webpack it will not remove or check the logical issues so it will it has a power that it will not allow the developers to commit the code in the git repository or aws or wherever uh, user is uh, trying to do so understand this is a beautiful thing you will get very clean code even in your repo that means you write some configuration in the webpack and it will make sure your developer is not writing a bad code what a beautiful miraculous thing actually okay so i will explain you everything just stay tuned with me stay with me until the end of this video you are going to get so many things and you will learn so many things using this uh, webpack okay you will you will fall in love today you just go through my video completely you will fall in love welcome back friends let's move on to the different architectures uh, which uh, like you see on the screen uh, one is uh, I have sh I have seen the image of monolithic architecture wherein everything is on the same place right uh, interfaces business layer database database MySQL MongoDB or whatever database you have let's say it is on the same place it is generally not in the same place database layer database code is there but database uh, actual database server is always different kind of okay in the production environments so but all the codes like there are no microservices there everything is written by the single application like html is very tightly coupled with the code like the presentation logic html and css are tightly tightly coupled with the php .NET, or java code the logical layer i mean okay so this is kind of monolithic architecture everything at the same place and what happens in the microservices architecture so this is very uh, famous architecture which nowadays is very popular in 2022-23 okay so what microservice architecture does is there are different microservices literally different repos and deployment strategies are different deployment cycles are different ci cd pipelines are different and the responsibility is also different of each microservice so each microservice does its own job only it has nothing to do with what other th are th thinking and microservice architecture when we talk about pure microservice architecture it is said that one microservice architecture, one microservice repo, that one service will be connecting to one database, and that is responsible for you know uh, doing any kind of third operations on that uh, database. But generally, sometimes it happens that we break the rule, okay, for some reason. But it should not happen. To get the performance, we do that actually because let's say there is one database called as payment and one microservice called as payment payment db and payment microservice so if payment uh, if invoices has to do something with the payment what invoices will do it will contact to payment payment service and it will internally get the data from payment service payment db and then pull it in its own service okay and then it gives to you back to the uh, invoice service right otherwise uh, there are different ways to data communication actually uh, that is very broad topic again like we can uh, implement the queues we can Im implement the event bus we can implement the synchronous communication using rest apis and all between the different microservices i mean but right now i am not going to talk about all that 
stuff actually because we our topic is main topic we don't want to i don't want to divert from the main topic okay it is a web pack so let's talk about that but i wanted to give you a little bit understanding of what microservices does so different microservices different task different connections to the databases this is what is expected right so the, this is the back end like microservice refers to the back end always like node js java asp.net code all that and when we talk about microservice ui microservice framework that is also the does the similar thing for the but for the front end so let's say there are different different uh, responsibilities like payment user management like login logout forgot my profile edit profile whatever that is uh, that is uh, th those are the separate repos right so user management payment invoices uh, feedback whatever so each will be having different microservices and we will consider each of the microservice as a different project like it will be a different repo it will work on uh, the different uh, port it will have a different ci cd pipeline it will have a different set of people working on it everything okay so consider it as a separate project but it will be a small project and at the end all these things will be going on to the database uh, i mean sorry on the server and execute is as if it's a single project so there are some challenges also uh, we are going to talk about those challenges also actually what are the challenges the main challenge is uh, there should be a code which will be reusable by all the microservices otherwise micro ui i mean front ends repos otherwise what will happen you will have to duplicate the code okay so for that there is a concept of container also i am going to explain that also so there is a container where we keep the store where we keep the common logic and we share that with the other repos what that mean is container is the one repo which is the whole and soul of that micro front end ui and it is shared with all the repos so that the common reusable functionalities can be used by uh, all the microservices otherwise you will have to replicate all the code in this microservice and that microservice every microservices okay so this is what i wanted to explain i hope you all are with me and understanding what i am talking about monolithic architecture microservice backend architecture and microservice ui which is front end architecture so it's very popular nowadays so that's why i wanted you guys to understand what is the meaning what is all around uh, discussions and implementations are going on in the micro front end let's uh, proceed on the further slides so this is how micro front end representation is you see on the screen uh, i have shown you three different teams one is team cart one is team website and one is team payment so let's consider these all as a different micro front end different repo different ci cd pipelines to move it and uh, different people are working on it and as you see um, on all the uh, micro front ends uh, react js is used but what you can do is you can have react in team cart you can have view on uh, team website and you can have angular on the uh, team payment so don't worry about it because webpack is going to handle everything parsing creation uh, building the javascript because at the end what executes is your javascript in html only even though you write the code in react js what happens in the end babel loader will going to parse and it will transpile that code into the plain javascript only that's so that browser can understand this is the miracle which is going in the back end which we don't know generally in the as a developer right but this is how it works so that's the logic behind it so micro front end is an architectural pattern of building modern web applications by decomp decomposing a large front end application into smaller self contained and loosely coupled micro applications right so they are not tightly coupled you i hope you know what is loosely coupled and what is tightly coupled loosely coupled means they independently uh, work and they have no dependency if other micro front end does not work but in this scenario only one place is connected like container is connected to every other micro front end but uh, i am talking about all the other except the container i am talking about okay uh, each micro front end application corresponds to a specific feature or functionality of the overall application and can be developed deployed and maintained independently so i i explained all this stuff earlier right in a micro front end architecture the user interface is composed of multiple micro applications that can be developed using different technologies i told you that we can use plain javascript we can use plain typescript we can have react js we can have vue js in the similar application 
uh, and webpack is responsible for parsing it and creating a bundle out of it so don't worry at all okay you can do anything you can have different set of people different skill set of the people and write the code accordingly each micro application is responsible for a specific domain or user journey and they communicate with each other through well defined contracts or apis so you can connect the micro front ends with the uh, different things like uh, there are micro there are two things like one is build time and one is run time so we will talk about that also in the in this video so that is very important aspect to understand as a developer what is build time and what is run time okay so we will see both the both the approaches and it's very important an interview question uh, in fact every web pack and uh, front end developer must understand what is i'm talking about so key characteristics of a micro front end is uh, allow the independent development every person can write separate code on his own repo they are loosely coupled they are not very tightly coupled with each other that's why uh, they promote this scalability that means if any particular ui um, uh, repo is uh, going to use a lot of times or it is a very important so many things are there you can make it more scalable also flexible also right so you know uh, scalability what is the scalability you all know right uh, uh, scalability means the power of horizontal uh, scaling means uh, you know based on the demand you can scale it right uh, for the achieving the better performance or if you think that uh, there are 10000 users your system should work and at the same time uh, if 1 million users uh, you know logged in on any particular important day your application should not break so this is nothing but this comes under the scalability characteristics okay so uh, micro front end is a seamless uh, performs the seamless integration also uh, between the different uh, components and different uh, micro services micro front end and it can have own ci cd pipeline continuous delivery uh, deployment independent testing release cycles everything but when i say release cycle means you can release payment microservice on one day and card microservice on another day there is no uh, tightly coupling uh, you can also maintain the uh, versions also so you know that depends on you what uh, what how you are implementing that uh, you you can break down that monolithic front end application into smaller manageable parts so it's not that everybody is jumping on one monolithic architecture there are different things different uh, front end teams are working on the separate repos and this way you can create very large scale uh, project also you can do the incremental micro front end uh, migration i mean uh, so that let's say you have a very big micro uh, monolithic architecture you can uh, you know divide into smaller pieces and accordingly incrementally work on it and achieve whatever you want it is a isolated it works on the isolated environment because everything is different for each micro application right as i told you i keep told you to telling you every every time so every micro front end application provides you a facility of independent deployment also so what does that mean is uh, payment micro front end will be different your cart micro front end will be different uh, entire application is different having so many repos so many deployment cycles you will have to do right so overall micro front end formular model promotes modularity scalability and maintainability you can maintain very easily you can scale any kind of repo uh, as per its need and demand because you are breaking down application into smaller manageable units right it's not very complex thing it's a small thing just the communication stuff i am i am going to explain you how it communicates i will i have written the code also i will show you how micro front end interact with each other also don't worry at all they they will interact with the different micro different ports on your local system i will show you everything